All right, I'm going to be First Samuel chapter three. So I am going to preach the weirdest message tonight, and and I don't know why I'm preaching at all. It's I'm just a messenger, and I I've questioned the Lord about 25 times in this. Why am I preaching this? Is the but one of the in all my years of preaching in every kind of situation stuff. One of the strangest messages I've ever preached, and uh, and I don't know why the Lord's uh, give me this, but. Uh, I understand it's a little bit of a reflecting time with uh, family and, of course, with uh, my first child getting married, but uh, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach, and I don't know how this applies to you, and I don't know how God's going to use it, but I, I'm just a messenger. It's God, what He wants preaches what we preach, and He just tells me what to preach and always makes it pretty clear. And so I'm going to preach on uh, uh, raising pastor's kids, raising pastor's kids. You say, why are you going to teach that? I have no idea. But that's what the Lord's told me to preach on tonight. And uh, so I'm just going to give you some things that I have done. And uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 3 and verse 11, and some things I've done right, some things I've done wrong. And, uh, and uh, so I've, I've done plenty of both, I think. And uh, 1 Samuel 3, but I think it apply to all of us raising kids and also some concepts that are just biblical concepts for our relationship with God. Maybe the Lord will use it to help you, but it's certainly what he wants tonight. Verse 11, it says, The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, in which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house when I began. I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. All right, let's go ahead and pray, and we'll... Uh, let me read verse 14 also. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of, the, of Eli's house shall not, or shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offerings forever. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the chance to teach your word. Lord, you know that this is what you put in my heart. And Lord, I just tell you, I trust you. Well, I'll be obedient and preach what you're telling me to preach. And I just pray you'd use it. And your spirit would speak in a great way. And Lord, help me to uh, just say what you want said, nothing more, nothing less. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would move in a great way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, he, because of Eli's uh, <clears throat> mess ups in his family, they were the priests family, the priest family, God removed their family from the priesthood and, uh, and, 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 and took them out forever from, from that office because they were in a very sacred position and, uh, and, and his children were adults, um, but he as the dad didn't restrain them and he knew about it. He wasn't that bad a guy, but his children were awful and he never did anything about it and, uh, and they were very wicked in the temple and did a lot of bad things. <clears throat> His his actions affected others, and uh, and in chapter two, and uh, verse uh, twenty two, it says this. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did into Israel, how that they lay with the women uh, that assembled at the uh, door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and said unto them, Why do you such um, things? I hear uh, I, I hear of your evil uh, dealings with all the people. And he just gives him kind of a lecture. He says, now, my sons, it is not good, a good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. And <laughs> there was biblical punishment for these things. And they, 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 were, they were, and he says, you shouldn't be doing that. No, it was much more serious than that. And, uh, and uh, he knew about it, and he just didn't do anything about it. And, uh, and, and lectured them when they should have been removed at the very minimal and uh, and and much worse probably for for what they did it matters and uh, <clears throat> it matters what a pastor does and what their family does and how the pastor leads their family it's a biblical thing i'm going to be in first timothy chapter 3 and i'm going to explain this to you most pastors won't preach this to a church because it makes people look at you and uh, and say ooh let's see how he's doing and uh, and that's just the way it is. But uh, it's just, you know what? I have a high, somebody much higher than you. I'm more worried about looking at me. And uh, and so um, I, I I don't worry about you too much. It's the Lord that I want to make sure that I please and impress. And I don't mind the challenge of trying to do better because I'm not a perfect parent. I I got a I, I have I've made a lot of mistakes as a parent. 
and and a lot of them were <clears throat> mostly because I was never raised. I came from a terrible home and and never had a dad at home and never most of the time not a mom at home and usually just did my own thing. So I never saw how to be a dad, and uh, so I had to learn uh, starting about 17 years old. Uh, what does a dad do? Because I never saw I never saw a dad in home. And, uh, and, and, and so, and, and, and all the men that I was around outside that would have been my examples that I could have looked up to, most of them are alcoholics and, uh, and, and bad examples. And so I didn't really, I had a real, re, I was really behind when I started. And that's why I keep having kids, um, because I'm trying to certainly figure it out. And I figure, well, if I keep having kids at some point, I'll raise a kid, you know, I'll do everything right. And, uh, that's why, uh, my oldest is 20, gonna be 25 this month, and my youngest is eight. I think I don't know, and uh, and uh, don't ask for their names. Um, but uh, but but um, because I have a lot to learn, I had a lot to learn, and and uh, but I tried hard, read a lot, and listened to wise people, and try to do that. So it's First Timothy chapter three, and verse four it says, I'm um, talking about a pastor, what their requirements are, and uh, the requirements he must be blameless. Verse two, and all those things, uh, the husband of one wife, um, vigilant, um, sober of good behavior. Um, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a uh, brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in, sub in subjection with all gravity. And of course, it talks about this in Titus also and gives the same set of requirements. And it says why. Um, for if a man know not how to rule his, his own house, um, how shall he take care of the church of God? So it says, look, you have a house and, and a home and handle it well. If you can't do that with whatever, two, three, four, five, six people, and you can't keep this thing organized and running well and the finances and, and the kids under control and, and know how to lead your wife and how to lead your children and people want to follow you, how are you going to do it with the congregation? It starts at home. And so if, if, if they don't want to follow you, why would you think the church would all follow you when you have your family with you all week long and you have all that influence upon them? And so you've got to rule your own house well and, and to do that. It, 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 it says, of course, it says children in subjection, and it says in Titus also, and uh, it says having your children in subjection and, and in, in his own house. I think part of that to understand is, is speaking of children, you cannot control what adults do when they're not in your house. Uh, people have free will. You cannot, you cannot take free will out of someone. But when they're kids, they're in your home. You have uh, the ability, and it doesn't say even they're spiritual. It says you run your house well. Why? Because you can't make anybody spiritual. You can't make anybody spiritual. You will love God. Come here, whack, whack, whack. That, that's not going to work. Okay. And, and you can't make somebody love God. You can't make somebody uh, have, a, have a prayer life. You can say, go in your room and pray. I would never do that, but you could do that. But that doesn't mean they're going to go in the room and pray. You don't have a prayer meter. You're not really praying. Uh, you, you can't do that. And you can't make somebody, it'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? And, uh, but you can't do that. And so, um, but, but you can be doing a good job at their house, making sure it's run well, and, 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 and leading your family and, and, and the children in your home. And children are naturally spiritual. And if, you, if you're any kind of parent, your children will want to be spiritual and follow you and, uh, and, and do all those things. <clears throat> it shows you know how to do it, so you could, um, you could, you could know, know how to do it at church because you don't know how to do it at home. If you can't do it at home, don't expect to be able to do it at church, okay? Everything starts at home. Uh, the thing that made me start thinking about this a little bit, I've been asked overseas many times by, by pastors saying, you know, just question of the family. How do you, how do you get your kids? And, and, and probably the most common one is how do, you, how do you not get your kids to hate the ministry? A lot of kids, preachers, families hate the ministry. And, and then when, when uh, Brother Nick and I were talking, and, and he, one of the questions he asked me, he says, how do you get your kids to like the ministry so much? It's obvious they, they like the ministry a lot. And then when they, they were trying to get married, I said, Tiffany, you understand you're, you're marrying into the ministry again. You know, you're in the goldfish bowl. You know what it's like. And do you want to do that? Are you sure you want to do that? Just, yeah, I'm, I'm used to that, Dad. It's fine. But I, I've talked to, you know, it's in Bible college and many times I've talked to preachers, kids who say, I don't ever want to go in the ministry. Because the ministry has a lot of different kind of pressures and a lot of uh, things. And, 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 and we'll, we'll talk about some of those things. But I never wanted my kids to hate the ministry. 
I don't hate the ministry. A lot of pastors don't like the ministry. It's a calling, but it's not what they want to do. I love the ministry. Um, and, and there's some things that I do to myself that I did with my children also that, that maybe made them like the ministry, although I didn't always do it perfectly. But uh, I've been asked that many times, how do, you, how do you get kids that not despise the ministry? Because there's some things that happen in a pastor's family um, that, that, that are very difficult. There's a lot of them, and I don't want to go into all of them, but, but uh, I, could, I, could, I, could, I could have uh, uh, Brother Matt here go out of the room, go outside, tell you the things that that hurt pastors' families, then I could have him come inside, take the pulpit, I'd go outside, and he'd tell you the same things I just said, <laughs> okay? Because there's certain things that hurt pastors' families. Now, our church is really good at it, and we don't have a lot of those things and, and things like that, but there's a lot of things that, that put pressure on a pastor's family. If you're not careful, you <clears throat> you, you uh, your kids end up not liking the ministry, and, uh, and, and, and the ministry is God's will for my life, and, uh, and it's a calling, and so I don't want that. And so how I try to raise my kids in the ministry, and I'm just going to give you these things, just some things. This isn't exhaustive, and maybe I won't finish it off, but I'll give you <clears throat> a few things. Number one, I treated them like kids. <laughs> I treated them like kids. Let me take you to the book of Romans. I'm going to explain that a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I treated them like kids. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. Romans chapter 2 and verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without the law shall perish without the law, and as many as have sinned with the law shall be judged by the law. God says, I don't have any respect of persons. I'm going to treat you guys the same. Uh, and in Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, here's a, one of the hardest things <clears throat> on pastor's family is the people in the congregation, they have kids, and their kids, well, they're sinners. And my, and they say, man, my kid, I don't know. I never taught him to be bad, but he automatically knew how to lie. He knew how to steal. As soon as he saw a toy he wanted and another kid saw it, they didn't say, let's share, brethren. They didn't do that at two years old. They didn't, they, 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 it's built in. They're fallen creatures. And, and, and so they know, man, my kid, I gotta be careful because my kids, man, they have, they, they have a bad nature inside. They have a sinful nature. They'll do bad things if you don't watch them. I gotta watch my kids. If I live in the can in the counter, they, uh, they'll take it in a second. My kids will say, Mom and Dad, I'm, my, my temper is not good right now. Will you please put me to bed because I don't feel well and I feel kind of grumpy. They don't do that. It's, it's not, and, and everybody knows. They say, man, my kids are not perfect. They're good kids, but they have some issues. You know, they got bad natures. Well, here's the thing. The newsflash is, did you know that pastor's kids are made of the same material that your kids are? <laughs> And you know what? I knew that I had kids who were going to be sinners because my wife is a sinner. And, 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 uh, and, what, and well, she is. I know she doesn't seem like it, but, uh, but uh, I knew that because she's a child of humans, both of us, I'm joking, of course, they probably get their better half from her, and uh, that I wouldn't have perfect kids. And so I don't flip out and expect my kids to be perfect, and I don't treat them differently than the kids in the church. You know why? That some kid in the church, he runs in the hallway and jumps and kicks the wall and makes a scuff mark. Okay? If it's my kid, I say, dumb kid, clean it up. And if it's your kid, I say, dumb kid, clean it up. <laughs> you know why? I don't say, oh, I don't believe it. My child, he, he ran in the hallway. I don't want my kids to run in the hallway. But I, I, I treated my kids. And I don't understand what kids are like. And I don't expect my kids to sit there and go all day. Look, I wanted a big yard. You know when my wife and I try to buy a, a house, you know the biggest thing we look for is not a house but a yard? Because I don't, I don't live in, When I was a kid, I went out and I disappeared for the day. And I rode everywhere and went everywhere and climbed everything and ran everywhere. You can't do that nowadays. The world's too crazy. So I wanted a big yard. I didn't care about my house. I could live in a shack. But I wanted a big yard for my kids to climb and run and play and dig and, 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 and uh, attack things and catch snakes and eat them. And all. No. Um, but uh, just be kids. And, and why? Cause, because they're just kids. And they, I, don't, I don't expect them to be perfect. They're made of the same material. That means also with my kids, I'll do what I do with everybody. I'll love them. I'll give them mercy. 
Look, a church member, some of you come to me and say, man, my, my, my teenage daughter's pregnant. I'll, I'll help you. I'll have compassion on you. I'll be a friend to her. I'll love her. I'll help her with whatever she needs. And we'll go through the whole process. And, and why? Because you have human kids. And they need mercy, and they need grace, they need compassion, they need love, and they need help. And, and, and my kids are going to struggle. And I don't gasp. <gasps> my kids went and stole your kids' candy. Now, you might do that. You say, they're pastor's kids. Yes, they are made out of plastic, and they do not sin. <laughs> no, they're humans. And I say, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll whoop them. And I'll discipline them, and I'll teach them, and I'll make them buy your kids' candy and give them back to you. Or I'll make them, or, or, or I'll make your kid give back the candy you stole from mine last week. <laughs> but it, I, I understand they're humans, and, and, and I didn't treat them like they were, what do you mean you struggle? Well, I struggle. <laughs> so I wanted them to be able to talk to me. And I'd say, Dad is going to flip out because he hates my guts because I want to go. And Dad is driving to the road and somebody cut me off. I wanted to ram them. Where did that come from, Dad? I go, um, uh, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> so, yeah. I felt like that before, too. Because there's no respect to persons with God. You can make a, uh, an error one time. And sometimes you deny that it, your kids are like that because you don't want it to be true. Or you cannot discipline your kids and always defend them when they do wrong. Where another kid in the church, they go do this thing and, and they would be kicked out of their, 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 their the, the youth department, but your kid wouldn't be. No, I don't treat him any differently. <clears throat> I treat him the same. And, 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 and I give them the consequences and I also praise them. Because here's a big problem with pastor's kids. A pastor's kid can be a pretty good kid, but people are saying, why isn't he perfect? Pastor, I saw your I saw your son out there. And you know what? He 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 glanced at a woman lustfully. So did your son, but he's not a pastor's kid. <laughs> okay. So, is it which Bible is? Give me the pastor's kid's Bible so I can know the rules for him. But understand, he shouldn't do that, and he should be dealt with. But understand, if 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 one of my daughters goes out and spends too much shopping. It's not because she's a Byram, it's because she's a woman, okay? And because she's human, amen? No, that didn't go over good. And, uh, and, 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 and so, and anyway, by the way, my daughters are frugal. My wife is more frugal than me. But, but I'm joking, but understand, I, I don't treat them any differently. I understand, uh, you know, it's tough out there, and it's tough to be a teenager. It's tough to be a kid, and let me be patient with you. I try not to put unrealistic expectations on them. They are kids, not preacher's kids. Sometimes I have to stay at the church for a long time, and I have, and I have active, busy, healthy kids. And I, I, I wanted them to learn to play and active and be, I don't want my kids doing this all day. My kids don't do that. My kids aren't media kids. They're yard kids. They're, they're, they're normal. They're what I, would, what I was. They're normal kids. And they, 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 they're creative and climb things and play and, and do all that stuff. But, and so we sit in church, and, I, and boy, somebody's got to meet with me, and they have an emergency, and they're in my office for an hour and a half. And my kids have to sit around for an hour and a half. And you know what? I say, go ahead and go play with the toys. It's fine. You're hungry? Here. Go, here's some money. Go buy something. And, and there's some wife to get them something. I, I, I don't expect them to sit in the chair and sit in the front row and do not move until I get out of this meeting. I wouldn't do that to somebody else's kid. I just, I just treat them like they're kids and understand that they're normal. <clears throat> I don't treat them more harshly, but I also don't let them get away with things. I try not to. We find Eli said to not restrain his children. When we go to camp, we have 125 kids at camp. At camp, my kids are kids. What cabin do you put them in? Whatever cabin it is, put them in cabins. Well, what do you, what do you make sure the counselor does them? Nothing. <laughs> They're a kid at camp. They're just kids. I let them be kids. I let them be normal. And I let them just... The, uh, I, I, and just, just do the normal things. And I try to do that. I don't excuse when they do wrong. I'll punish them just like anybody else. I will praise them when they do good because I know that as preacher's kids, it's going to be harder for them to impress people because people think preacher's kids are perfect because they never had a preacher kid in their own home. <laughs> and so I just let them, uh, and I make sure I praise them because I know generally people are going to say, well, they're not, you know, I was watching the pastor's kids and, you know, one of them ran in the hallway one day. Oh! <gasps> Really? <laughs> My kid ran in the hallway. I know. 
and we, we talked to him about it, and we like put glue in their shoes and everything. None of it works, and 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 so we we just that that's okay, and 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 it, because people are going to say, you know, you got a pretty good kid. They say that about the plumber's kid. If he's a pretty good kid, they say that about the electrician's kid and the contractor's kid and the and the engineer's kid and and the doctor's kid. If they're a good kid, they say that's a pretty good kid. But if the preacher's kid, they say, you know, I, I've seen some issues with him. That's just what happened. So I make sure I treat them normally. I write my kids letters like I would somebody else in the church. Man, I'm sure proud of you. It was great. Just should appreciate how you work in the bus ministry and do this and that. And I, I, I try to write my kids letters sometimes and just praise them and 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 do things with them and realize they have needs. And treating them like normal people. Why? Because Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 23, for all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God. That's going to include my kids. Because it includes me. And I and they came from me. And so we, we try to, I try to do that. Just treat them like everybody else. Number two, <clears throat> I provide for the family. I'm going to get 1 Corinthians 7. Some of these are mistakes. They sound obvious. But some of these things, the ministry don't happen. A lot of people, a lot of churches... <clears throat> Do not provide well for the pastor. And so the pastor lives a beggarly life and 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 he lives in a shack and and he's and and you guys know me, I can I have slept in more mud huts than, than everybody in this room combined. Okay? There's not it won't even be close. Okay. I get I uh, and my wife be content if I if I said God's calling us the mission field, she would go and be content. My kids would go and we'd have a blast and we could we could live as primitive as you can imagine. We'd have a we have a great time. But I understand most churches they they the pastor doesn't live like the people around them. And they're very poor. And you and even if they live on on, on property and, and things like that, the pastor never owns up his own place. So when he moves to another church, he has nothing. And he continues his whole life like that, and 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 the church is paying him not enough, and say, well, the pastor shouldn't have a bunch of money. Well, no, they don't need to be T.D. Jakes, and they don't need to be, you know, Benny Hinn, and all that stuff that we just read about not being covetous like that. But nor should he be him and his hungry eating beans and rice every meal. They're college graduates who've worked hard, and they're work. And then the Bible talks about that in First Corinthians nine, the labor is worthy of his hire. And look. I can say that because I worked a full-time job starting the church. I worked a full-time job for seven years. I paid the church's bills. <laughs> I supported the church. Church didn't support me. And then I worked a part-time job. And, and I did all those things when I was starting the church. And, and, and if the church didn't pay me a dime, I would still support my family. Okay? But I never made it so my family was being evicted, so they're hungry, so that uh, they were, um, they didn't have a, uh, 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 a way to get anywhere. Uh, and, and we've driven, uh, and to this day, my, my car right now is a 2004. I only own one car for a family of seven. And, uh, and, and that's fine. I'm not complaining at all. Um, I'm choosing to do that right now because I'm trying to get a bunch of other things paid off and, and things like that. But, but uh, you know, I, I want my family not to think, man, if you go into ministry, you're going to be, you know, digging for worms and going fishing down at the creek hoping to catch a fish for a meal. I, I don't want that. I don't. I, the, the first Corinthians seven says you're sp- not. You're supposed to provide for your family, and uh, and the Bible says if a man, any man provideth not for his own, he's worse than an infidel and hath denied the faith. So I've worked full time jobs while I was a full time pastor. I've done all that, and uh, and and because I, I'm I'm supposed to, and I want my kids to not wonder if their bills are going to be paid, if the if if why the cu- cu- why the <laughs> why did why do they keep calling you all these times, Dad, and asking for money? I don't want the collections agencies to call me, and they don't. Never have, and they never call the church because you pay our bills on time, all of them. And, and, and I wanted to have that so that, so that they would uh, uh, feel like, you know, they're safe and they don't have to worry about, why do we have to leave this apartment so fast, Dad? Doesn't God provide for us? And, and, and they never had to do that. And I don't want them to have to do that. First Corinthians chapter 7 <clears throat> In verse 32, but we would have you uh, without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth the things that are of this world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between the wife and a virgin. An unmarried man careth the things of the Lord, that he may be holy both in body and spirit. But he that is married careth the things of the world, uh, that, uh, uh, that, he, that she that is married careth the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I speak this to your prophet. He said, look, Paul said, I, I'm not married. I, don't, I can go and I can go live in the jungle. I can go be put in jail. It doesn't matter. I'm not married. I don't have to care for a family. But if you are married, you have to provide for your family. If you provide not, you're worse than an infidel. You've denied the faith. You have to provide for your family. And so I've always tried to provide. I also protect my family. I make sure they're safe. 
I make sure they're not in danger. I make sure I protect them emotionally. This is where a big problem happens in the church that, that doesn't happen with, 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 what won't happen to me as, as a dad, is what happens is, it happened a couple times in our ministry, and we put a stop to it real quick, is somebody, everybody in the church thinks that your kids are supposed to be something, so they take your kids aside and tell them, how dare you? You're a pastor's kid, and you shouldn't, and they just, they lay into your kid. Look, I wouldn't spank your kids. If you have a problem with my kids, come to me. I'll deal with them. And I protect my kids. If somebody's done that, I said, hey, don't do that. You have a problem with my kids, talk to me. You're not their parent. Because everyone all of a sudden think they're supposed to, they're, and, and they get nasty to your kids. And I don't allow that. You got a problem with my kids, talk to me. You're not their parent. Okay? I, if I, if I've, I'll do the same thing to you. And, and, I, I'm not, and, and I will talk to you. That's the parent's job. It's not your job. If I ask you to do it, then you have permission. But, but don't, don't do that. I protect my kids emotionally. Um, I don't tell them all the problems in ministry that I face. If I'm dealing with someone who wants to kill themselves, and, I say, and, and it's someone they know, and I'm not going to go, kids, guess what? Mary almost killed herself, and her kids are so depressed. They're on antidepressants. My kids don't need to know that. They're kids. <laughs> I protect them. Okay, any conversation between me and a woman, my wife has every right to know about all of it, and I tell that. I don't even tell my wife every single burden. She doesn't know every single burden I deal with. God has given me grace for that particular job. I tell her a lot of things, and sometimes I seek her counsel on things, and, and most everything with a woman I talk to her about, but I don't counsel her much anyway. I send it to my wife, but, but, but I, I try to protect my kids from all the negative things and, 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 and point out the blessings of the ministry because there's so many blessings. But you know what? People are going to leave the church. That's, look, Jesus had an unsaved person who betrayed him. And he only had 12 to worry about. <laughs> I expect that. It's part of humanity. We're in an unstable world and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not going to talk to my kids about everybody who leaves the church. I'm going to talk about the people who are being changed and the souls are being saved and people who are being transformed and people are growing and, and great things are happening and the people who are getting their lives fixed and all that stuff. And, and I'm going I'm to protect my family and, and try to do that. Um, and I don't let people come and criticize me to my family. I'll have my kids come tell me. And I'll go say, hey, you got a problem? Let me show you Matthew here. It says, if you have a problem with you and your brother, go to you and him alone. Don't go to my kids. What are you doing? Talk to me. You can talk to me about anything. <laughs> Don't do that. And, and so I protected my family from, from a lot of those things so they wouldn't despise the ministry. I remember I was, I was at pastor school, and, and I was sitting next to a guy, and, and all of a sudden, he just started bawling his eyes out. It was the invitation. People were surrendering the ministry. And this guy jumped up, bawled his eyes out, and ran back to his dad and started hugging his dad and crying. And then he raised his hand to surrender for the ministry. And afterward, I, I, met, I was a college student. I saw him at college. I said, hey, I said, I know your dad's a pastor. He said, he must have been pretty excited he, about you surrendering the ministry. And, and, and stuff. he said, man, he said, he, angry. He said, I didn't want to surrender the ministry. I don't know why God called me. I don't want to be in the ministry. I've seen how people treat my dad. Well, that's his dad's fault. <laughs> that's his dad's fault it, for telling every, the way everybody, moping around, saying all this. Look, go win a new convert to Christ and go talk about the homeless guy who's now coming to church and getting saved and we're getting him straightened out. We're getting some treatment and, and talk about the good things. Everybody hates me. Look, if, uh, first of all, if you hate me, I don't care. Um, I don't know it half the time. And, and you know what? If, if you don't like me, I got, you know, 149 who do like me. And I don't need to go home and talk about the one person who doesn't like me. There's always one. Okay? I don't understand why you keep going to church and you don't like the pastor anyway. <laughs> Go find a church where you like the pastor. Okay? I'm not going anywhere. Okay? And, and so, uh, and, and come tell me why. I'm probably doing something wrong. Tell me why you don't like me. Let's talk about it. But don't sit there. And then go tell other people. Get some guts. Go talk to the person. I'm probably doing, I'm probably doing something dumb. I've done, I do dumb things 10 times by Tuesday. Okay? Just talk to me. And, and that's okay, but I protect the kids from that. And, and my wife also. I, I, don't, I don't want her to know everything that goes wrong. 
half the time, uh, you know, half the time, you know, the things are, are frustrating things, and, and you just everybody doesn't need to know everything. And if they do, then then you tell them. If they ask, you tell them. Uh, one time, my wife always can go through my phone, and anytime she wants to, nobody wants to touch my phone because it's not high tech, and nobody can figure it out. I have the ultimate screen protector. Nobody can get into my phone because it's from ten years ago, and nobody knows how to use it. And uh, like, how do you slide this thing? And uh, and and one time, my wife grabbed my phone, and she was looking through it, and I said, honey. And she can always look through my phone and say, will you do me a favor and not look, look through my phone? And she says, why? Because she can always look through my phone. I said, someone texted me some nasty stuff. I don't want you to read it. But I said, you can if you want. And that's what's on there. But I don't want you to have to hear that about. It's all lies. and You're going to get angry at them. <laughs> my wife, if you criticize her, she wouldn't care. If she criticized me, she'd want to kill you. And it's the same thing with me and her. Say something about me, I laugh. And I say, yeah, probably right. Say to my wife, I kill you. And, uh, and, and, so, and so I didn't want her to deal with that. Why? Because I just want to protect her from that stuff. And, and, and I said, go ahead. Go ahead. And I, and never mind. It looks bad. Go ahead and read it if you want. I don't want you to think I'm hiding something in my phone. And, and well, I just try to protect her from, from that stuff and, uh, and not have to hear all the bad stuff. And, and there's not much of it, but, but you have that. Next, um, <clears throat> I, well, I, tr I try to treat my, a big part of this is treating my wife right. Let's go to Ephesians, and let me show you there. Boy, i got to hurry. I'm getting through this fast. And uh, Ephesians 5. I wanted my kids to see me treating my wife right. Amen. Because I'm a picture of God to my family. I'm the father, and God parallels that. Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands love your wife like the church. Verse 20, uh, 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his, uh, uh, loveth his wife loveth himself. And, and so I'm teaching my kids. I'm teaching my kids by how I love my wife, how, there's, how God loves them. And for them to grasp the love of God, they're going to first learn it through seeing how I love my wife. And my kids... Have, have seen a phenomenal marriage, so I didn't grow up with it. Uh, by God's grace, God God helped me and and gave us a fantastic marriage. And and our kids have never seen my wife, and none of our kids have ever seen my wife and I have a fight. They've never seen that at one time. None of them. They've never seen us yell at each other. They've seen her beat me with rolling pins, but that's no. They've never seen that. I'm joking. And uh, but they they've never they've never seen it. Why? Because we've loved each other. And when you love somebody, you treat them right. And I wanted to represent Christ well in my home. And I wanted to go and, and, and in my family um, provide that representation of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father provides the needs of his people. And, and Heavenly Father loves his children. And I want them to see God in me and try to let that uh, provide the things they need to see and live. And it looks right to them and it lines up with the Bible. Number three, I tried to show them the blessing of being in the ministry. Oh, I gotta hurry. First, uh, let me go to Second Corinthians three eight. <clears throat> so maybe some of these things can help you and your family. And again, I'm not saying it's perfect in all these things. I'm just telling you some things I've tried to do, and I I, I think that uh, sometimes I did, I did okay, and sometimes I didn't. And it was I try to do. It talks about the, how glorious the ministry is. I'm just gonna just kind of skip down to verse eight. How shall not the ministry of the Spirit be rather glorious? And uh, in chapter uh, 4, verse 1, Seeing therefore we have this ministry, as you've received mercy, we faint not. Receive this mercy. It's, a, it's a, 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 this ministry, and it's, a, it's an amazing thing, and it's an incredible thing. And then 1 Corinthians 4, 1, Let us account, let us man so account of us as the ministers of, of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God, and, and love the ministry. I love seeing the victories of the ministry, to see families who are going to get divorced, repaired, to see lives who are messed up, get hope, to see Jesus in a home that was full of strife and now it has peace and joy, to see alcoholics and addicts set free, to see people, uh, to see prostitutes saved and get their lives right and find their purpose for living and find their true value and seeing all these things and let our kids see that and let them see the ministry's wonderful. I sometimes would just take a time off and, and all of a sudden I'll say, kids, let's go do this. And, and, and it's, it's not on schedule and it's noon or it's five at night or it's eight in the morning. Does not matter because I'm not on the clock. 
By the way, you don't want me on the clock. You don't want to pay me if, if you put me on the clock. You don't want to pay me for that. Uh, I'll, I'll work plenty of hours. But I say, kids, isn't it great I'm in the ministry? Because we can just go ahead and today and go get ice cream right now. You know a plumber can't do that. And, 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 and love being in the ministry. Kids, we're going on the missions trip. We're going to, go to, we're going to go to this country. We're going to do this thing. And, and, and talk about the blessings of the ministry. Look, kids, we get to labor and people get a... I mean, when, when the average guy labors, that's nice. He builds a building and that's all nice. But we build people. We build people. And, and kids, why don't you go talk to that That kid seems really sad. Can I tell you, kids, I visited his family. His dad just left his home. Why don't you go spend some time with that kid? You'll be able to help him and comfort him. And we'll go bring him a present this week. And show them what a blessing the ministry is and, and, and how great it is. And, 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 and do that. It's, it's, it's show them the ministry is a big blessing. That, that we do something so important. And God chose us to do this thing. And, and by the way, <clears throat> I have never put any pressure on my kids to go into the ministry. I am perfectly happy my kids don't go into ministry. Um, it's a calling. If they want to, it's great. If they don't want to, it's great. Um, uh, uh, I, I, if, as long as they do God's will, I'm happy. I don't feel they have a pressure. They, they've, I've never told my kids, you need to go in the ministry. I never would. Uh, I want God to call them if God calls them. And if God calls them to be a, a doctor, then I want to go be the best doctor for the Lord they can possibly be. Um, I've never put that kind of pressure because in ministry, not so you have to go in the ministry. I don't want them to think that the ministry. Ministry is you get to. Yes, sir. You get to, and uh, and you get to do that, and so uh, uh, you have that. Um, next, I love serving God. Let me take you to Proverbs four, uh, brother. Yeah, we'll go to Proverbs four. I love serving God. There's a joy in serving God, and it's supposed to be. If you ask my kids, is is my dad is your dad any different at home? They would say he is much less expressive. But they say that's the only difference, I think. That's what they say. Because when in front of a crowd, I can't be my stoic, unexpressive, quiet, hide in a corner, and not talk to anybody's self. Um, so in front of a crowd, I'm more expressive, but otherwise, I'm no different. I, I'm, I am as happy as I am right now. That's what I am on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Okay, I, I, I try to show them that I love serving God. You know, because I love serving God. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. I'd be back in the world. I love serving God. It's a way superior way to live. And what a joyful life it is to serve God. Real Christianity. I'm not talking about churchy, you know, religious stuff. I'm talking about really serving God. Bible Christianity, a real relationship with God. And, and, and the vibrant, abundant life that Jesus promises. I'm talking about not about religion. I'm talking about relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it is so far superior to anything else in the world. It's so rich and satisfying and real. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 says this. Um, but the path of the justice is a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not at what they stumble. They have no idea why their lives are messed up or why they end up like they do. We who are serving God in a real way, it is a path that gets better and better and better. Better and better and better. It's a blessed life. It's a rich life. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. Many times I'll go out. I'll take my kids, and I'll say, hey, come with me. I'm going to go on the bus route. And I'd go visiting on the bus route. And I'd take all my kids who went through this. And I'd take them on the bus route. And we'd go visiting uh, for a couple hours. And, we'd, and they'd love it. We'd go visit people and witness to people. And we would get the kids to come on the bus. And we'd talk to people. And we would do all that stuff. <clears throat> and then the way home, we would stop. And we would go, and we'd a lot of times get ice cream. And we would get chocolate dip cones at McDonald's. And we would, we, would, we would go back. And so when they thought of the ministry, they thought, that was fun. I went with that. I don't take them for 11 hours. Sometimes I go back myself because I have a lot to do, but I'll take them for a couple hours. And I went, that was fun. Can I go with your dad next week? That's what I want. And I get the ice cream for myself, too. And, uh, but, but I want them to have positive thoughts and happy thoughts about the ministry. I want them to realize, this is great. I want them to realize serving God is not a bad life. It's a great life. The Bible says it is. Now, we might go through persecution. You might end up in jail, but they sing praises to God in jail. They love serving God. And, and, and I love serving God, and it was real, and it was never an act. I always have loved serving God. I've, there's been hard times and burdens and, and tears and all that stuff because I'm on earth and I'm a human and all that stuff. But, but, but 
man, I get to serve God. I get to, I get to go to church. I get to pray. I get to read my Bible. And, 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 and don't teach everything as a duty. Oh, I have to read a Bible. No. I get to read my Bible. I have the Word of God, and God gave it to me, and I get to read it. And having a joy in the Christian life. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. <laughs> if you're Spirit-filled, that stuff happens, and uh, it's automatic. Next. <clears throat> I tried to shelter them properly. Let me take you to Proverbs 13. I try to shelter them properly. There's a proper way and a biblical way to shelter them. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I'm going to go a little fast here, but it says you shelter your people. You shelter your kids from the wrong people. I don't think you should shelter kids. Oh, okay, so you let your kids go with the... Uh, uh, you let your kids go hang around with the uh, with the, the the drug dealer down there in the gang, with the MS-13 kid people, right? Everybody believes in some sort of shelter in your kids. I was left to myself as a child. I had no rules, and a child left to himself comes to destruction. I was in so much trouble. I was such a miserable kid, depressed, at point suicidal, because I had no rules and I got around bad people. I forget. I must have been seven years old, eh, eight years old. One of the bad guys in the neighborhood, we were at the store, Thriftway, in Oregon City. And, and he says, hey, man, go steal me a pack of cigarettes. So I know what a pack of cigarettes was. I was a kid. I came out of the carton. He says, what are you doing, man? I said, I don't know. Here's a pack of cigarettes. Let's get out of here. Look, I was still in as eight years old because I was the wrong people. Okay? And, 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 <clears throat> and so uh, you, you're careful who they're around. That does not mean I isolate them. I don't isolate them. It's called ministry work. I'll tell you a story. I was, I was with, uh, uh, I was with one of my, we were, my kids were on the bus route a lot, and right, right over here, just two apartments over from where we are, and uh, we were. It was a bad area for a while. I mean, it was so bad, and and one one of the girls, the girls was coming in the bus. She was maybe twelve and thirteen. She just came off and on sometimes here and there. And one day we ran across her, and and some of the kids told us she started hanging around in a bad crowd. She got a bad boyfriend, and uh, all of a sudden we saw her, and uh, she she had the meth face. She's by fourteen. She had sores all over her face and the teeth and everything, and and. My kids were kind of shocked, and, and, and they said, Dad, what's wrong with her? What happened to her? And so I'd explain, that's, she ran off with the wrong boyfriend, and, she's, and, 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 and people had told us that, that she was doing meth and stuff, and, and they told me that. And, and we saw her, and they were shocked. She was a pretty girl before. And she's 14, you know. And I remember my daughter saying to me, Dad, I'm never going to do drugs. It was Brooke. Where Brooke is, Brooke's here somewhere. Hey, you remember that? Yeah. And I thought, okay, good. She's 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 immunized. <laughs> that, that helps because I want them to be helping needy people. I want them to see what sin does to people. I want them to go out. I, I don't mind when they go. I don't mind that bad when they hear some couple fighting and screaming and yelling and saying. People have marriages like that? Yeah. You marry the wrong person. Yeah. So I'm choosing what they see. I'm taking there. I think in Proverbs 7, he says, Solomon, I sat up, or Solomon says, son, I sat at my window, I watched a man who was simple. That's the term we don't want our kids to have. The term simple means they just don't know. And the simple pass on or destroyed, it says. They don't know. I want my kids to know about drugs and how not to do them. <laughs> okay, all my kids know if you marry the wrong person, did you see how they acted? That's what happens when you marry wrong. I want them to be afraid to marry wrong. I don't want them to go get married wrong and run off with this, this guy who promises everything and then come back and say, Dad, he's beating me, he's this and that. Well, a lot of parents say, You didn't know that was going to happen? I don't want to say that to my kids. I want my kids to say ahead of time, No, I know what's going to happen. I've seen 10 people do that. I remember, that's what I want. That is properly protecting them. I don't let them run with the wrong crowd and let the devil put in their ear the way this works. I teach them, the Bible teaches them, and I let them watch it in ministry work. 
And I try to do that and try to help them and, and, and do those things and, and learn from other people's mistakes. It's a lot easier to learn from other people's mistakes. I do not mind at all, and I like it when some of you had some rough bumps in your road and grew up rough. When you go to my kid and say, you don't know how good you have it. Don't make the mistakes I made. I don't mind that at all. Ask me, but I don't mind that at all. It helps them. It verifies what I've been telling them. And, 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 and it's a helpful thing. Next, <clears throat> I try to make sure they are personally saved and walking with the Lord. Back to 1 Samuel, chapter 2. Brother friend, when I'm turning there, you didn't know what I was preaching on. We didn't talk anything at all. Anything you want to say? You're right on. You know, it's a uh, ministry, it's a glass house. You know, I guess the one thing I did differently with my kids is that I let them know that they had a biblical responsibility if I was going to stay in ministry. Mm-hmm. Now, they were always first and important, but I always let the kids know, hey, listen, you've got a step of responsibility as much as I have responsibility for my character. Mm-hmm. And so it's a balance. Yeah. And I, I've got four kids that love the Lord and serve and faithful. Amen. Good. Good principles. Amen. One of the things, it's not in my notes, we'll, we'll turn there for a sec, but people have asked me so what do you put first the ministry or family i don't i don't i don't look at life that way if i if you force me into that choice i would say family but i don't live that way it's like saying what do you what, what's more what are you going to do eat or drink yeah. i'm not going to choose <laughs> it's a false dichotomy I don't, I don't choose that i do lots of both and uh, and 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 i don't choose ministry or family it's it, they go together i don't separate the two and uh, and, and 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 so people like the like the what's more important? I don't, I, don't, I don't choose things that way. I don't I don't choose between important things. I think you're foolish if you choose between important things. Should we read the Bible or pray? Yes. <laughs> Should I eat or drink? Uh huh. Yeah. Should I, who's more important? My kids, or my, my my spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you choose? <clears throat> Um, let's see, what are we on? I try to make sure they're personally saved and walking with the Lord. First Samuel chapter um, 2. Watch what God says about the problem was actually these people weren't saved. The kids weren't. Eli, or Hopni and Phineas, Eli's children. Now, the children of Eli were sons of Belial. That's a, that's a, a term in the Old Testament where they were, they were immoral, uh, bums, foolish, wasteful, bad people. What that term kind of meant? She just spoke of worthless people in, in, in that phrase. And they knew not the Lord. My kids will not be saved because they grow up in my home. My kids are not saved because they're my children. They don't, you, you are not born a Christian, even if you're in a Christian home. My children personally let them realize they do not deserve heaven. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. That includes them, just like me. And it's a little harder for them sometimes because they think, you know, I'm not that bad because they didn't, they don't come, you know, see the guy come to church and say, you know, I went out and I was married six times and, and I was in jail three times for domestic violence and then I met Jesus in jail. And they say, all I did is call my sister stupid and steal Legos. And so they think they don't need to be saved. No, they're still sinners. Right. And they still need Jesus. And they still need to personally come and say, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner, and I realize Jesus died for those sins, and I, I trust him as my Savior. I can't do that for them. And many times people in a good home, they don't realize you need to be saved too, and they don't do it personally. They just assume. Oh, yeah, my family's Christian. I'm Christian. No. No, not at all. Yeah. Everybody, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I wish I could accept Jesus Christ for somebody else, but you have to personally realize that you need Jesus, and he needs to be your Savior, and you can't earn your, your heaven by good works, that Jesus died and was buried and rose again is the only way to heaven, and you personally have to call upon him to save you. I can't do that for my kids. And many times when a kid goes astray, when it comes out later and they come back to the Lord, as they often do as they go astray, they find out they just never were saved. They just weren't saved. They just put on the act, and they just thought, I don't really need to do that, and, you know, I'm a good kid, and, you know, of course I'm saved, I'm part of this family, I grew up in the ministry. No, 
You can be in a, in, a, in a ministry family and never accept Jesus. And I try to make sure each one of them had a personal testimony of accepting Jesus Christ. And you do all you can do about that and pray for them and uh, and give the gospel to them and make sure. And don't let don't give them the answers. Make them answer the questions. Make sure they understand that they're saved. Just because you have good kids in a good home does not mean they've accepted Jesus as your Savior. They've got to personally do it for themselves, just like every one of us has to do. Lastly, and I'm just going to finish up with this, and again, it's not exhaustive, but I tried to live what I preach. Romans chapter 2. I was I didn't know anything, really. I knew so little. So I come out of the world. I, I, I am way behind the average kid because I had so little supervision and so little wise, so few wise people around me, and so few, usually people have a sensible person or two around them kind of saying, hey kid, you shouldn't be doing that, and you should be doing this, and do good in school. I had nobody. I just, everybody around me was not a good influence. And so, um, I was so far behind, when I started serving God, I, I immediately had a lot of the teenagers started trying to follow me and asking me questions. I'm thinking, i got to learn something here, because I don't know anything. And, and so I started studying the Bible, and I wrote down 10 things that produce good teenagers when I was a teenager. Because I realized the same things produce good teenagers, the same things ruin them. And one of the first things I found out that if the parents are Christian and hypocrites at home, you got no shot. Those kids are not going to turn out well. And then I said, the only way, then I found out, and I studied, I found out, the only way they have a shot is the parents admit they're hypocrites. But if the parents justify it, the kids are going to turn out bad. I just found that to be true. That it, it, a parent can be, man, I just want you to know, Johnny, I am not a good Christian. I am weak. I have a lot of struggles, and I know that, and, and please do better than I do. You, you should, it, serving God's a better way. I'm just weak. That's okay. But you, you, you act like you're a good Christian. You're saying, hey, everybody, I'm a good Christian. Bless God. Look at the size of my Bible. And, and, and you, walk, you walk around all spiritual and act like that, and then you go home and you take it around. You're cussing and drinking. And you're, it, <clears throat> forget about it. When their teenagers are going to say, that's all a joke. Nobody believes that stuff. Because they think everybody is like your home. They'll think my home's like that. They'll think everybody at church is putting on an act because you put on a good act at church. And then they think, well, man, everybody else looks just the same as my parents, and my parents are jokes. This isn't real. It's all a game. Uh, 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 Romans chapter 2. And it says, verse 1, it says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges doest the same things. And so I tried to live what I preach. Now, I don't do perfectly, and, and I preach pretty hard and, and stuff, but I tried to live it and try to be consistent and try to do what I, and, and I never said, kids, do what I say, not what I do. Never said that once. Never. No, I'd never do that. And I wanted to live in such a way my kids could do what I did and turn out pretty good. Try to live that way. You can't be a hypocrite. You can't sit here and say, Jesus gives me peace. And you go home and you're, you know, you know, screaming at traffic. You know, you're saying, it is well with my soul at church. And on the way home, you scream and yell, I hate your guts, you crazy drivers. Where are you from? California. And, and, and you scream and yell like that. Because we all know the bad drivers from California, amen. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and so, and, and Alaska. And, uh, but, uh, but, but we, don't, we, 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 we live what we preach. And, and I think that's such an important thing. Because a devil's going to exploit that if you're living a double life. You might mess up sometimes. You go, kids, I want to. And by the way, you have to apologize sometimes. And I blew it, kids. And I've had to do that and, 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 and try to live what you preach. Those are just some things I put down there. Um, those are, that's what I've tried to do. I haven't done it perfectly. And, uh, but uh, I think those are just some things. Maybe that'll help you in your life. Maybe that'll help you. Maybe some of you are younger and don't have to worry about it yet. But maybe you can help all of us parents. Maybe understand a little bit about what God does and, and, and how God the Father tries to work with us and love us and, 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 and help us be, do the right thing. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to teach your word. I pray whatever your purpose was in this message, Lord, because it sure doesn't seem like a normal message for this crowd. Lord, I just pray you'd accomplish it. I pray, first of all, that anybody who's not saved would accept Jesus Christ personally today not thinking that it's just automatically done or it's by good works. I pray, secondly, Lord, that maybe someone who isn't living at home or maybe is uh, not protecting their kids or treating other kids better than their own kids or whatever we might be doing that, that's not best, I pray we do these things. And I pray you'd use the Word of God in our lives. And thank you for it, Lord. And I pray that we become the kind of families, the kind of people, the kind of children that we need to be. 
and thank you for the Word of God and uh, and what it teaches in these things. In Jesus' name, that's about all right.